power inside you. All over the world, there are different names for it. But it's one thing. One power. And women who can touch it. We protect the world. Somebody's opinion. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Just Some Bodhi's Opinion. My name is Bodhi, and today I want to give a primer on the strength levels of the one power in the Wheel of Time. Now, I actually did this in preparation for another video that I'm preparing, but I thought that it would be good to have this as a separate standalone thing because I feel like I'll keep coming back to it. And when I started this channel, besides book reviews i had wanted to do you know some double clicks on the wheel of time especially on the one power and the dynamics and strength levels within the world of the wheel of time and one of my very first videos which was the failure of the camelin embassy delved into this and so i wanted to do this video which i could refer back to for any future analyses that i'm thinking about so before anything else i do want to warn that there are spoilers ahead especially at least until crown of swords so if you don't want to get spoiled by anything up to Crown of Swords, I would advise that you skip this video until you get more context on one power strength levels. Now, I'm going to be using the strength levels as per the Wheel of Time Companion. And within this book is a comprehensive list of all the characters and their strength levels. But the strength levels themselves need some explaining, and that's what I want to do in this video. Now, since I'm using the Companion, I do have to call out that there will be inconsistencies. The companion itself says that there are some inconsistencies within uh, the, the companion. I've only found one so far, which I can talk about. And also, I'll be talking about pure strength level. So this doesn't take into account any amplifiers like Angrial or Sa Angrial. And it doesn't take into account dexterity because, you know, women are more dexterous with uh, use of the one power. It doesn't take into account the talent in the five powers. You know how generally men are better in fire and earth and women in water and air. So the main reason why Robert Jordan had created the strength level chart was to ensure that he kept track of which Aes Sedai differed to whom. And that in itself is a spoiler for Crown of Swords. So anyway, let's dive right into it. So first we're going to be talking about the power rankings of the modern age Aes Sedai. Or the Aes Sedai before our Wonder Girls, Nynaeve, Elaine, Egwene. There were 60 levels of power rankings for the Aes Sedai. One being the highest and 60 being the lowest. My analytical brain liked the symmetry of it being factors of 12, and we're going to see that later on. So I've divided the 60 ranks into 5 rows of 12. Now, when the Wonder Girls did come in, and in the modern era where we start getting Forsaken, who were way above modern age Aes Sedai, this added 12 more levels on top of the current rankings of 60. And so we would relabel all the rankings you'll see that all of the old rankings have been moved down one level of 12. So what was once the number one rank is now the number 13 rank or 13-1. And the smallest rank of 60 was now 72 or 72-60. And then anything above that would have a plus sign before the, the number. Now the highest female Chandler would be a one or plus 12. This is how you would read the rankings across um, the companion and all the wikipedia articles now let's just round this out by including the men the men in terms of brute strength level had six more levels above the highest woman chandler and in this regard anything above one plus twelve would have two pluses beside it so the highest highest level of power ranking was plus plus one all the way to plus plus six and then after the plus plus six would be the one plus 12 or the highest female Chandler. So I've segregated this into three colors. So we've got the six levels of men above in red. And then in green are all the additional rankings of female Chandlers after the modern age. And in blue were all the old modern age numbers. And so this is the full picture of the strength levels of the one power. This type of symmetry appeals to me because... Everything is broken down into one page. Now, let me talk about several thresholds here, which I am coloring in orange. The first threshold I wanted to talk about was 2210, 
that is the minimum threshold for traveling. Anyone below this line would not be able to travel unless they're linked together. The next threshold I wanted to talk about was 4533. This is the minimum strength level to get tested as an Aes Sedai. And we've got Daijian over here. And to anyone who's forgotten who Daijian was, Daijian was the white sister who accompanied Cad Swain. And, and Cad Swain basically used her as a spy. Because of Daijian's strength, Daijian was always going to be the person who would defer to any other Aes Sedai on top of her. And then let's talk about um, the other threshold, which is the 4634, which was the which is below the minimum strength level to test for Aes Sedai, but was the minimum level to be tested for accepted. So there were some people who were tested for accepted, but would never be eligible to test for Aes Sedai. And of this, we see Alice of the Kin, who barely had the strength to get the accepted test and would never be able to test for the shawl. And so below this line would be people who won't even be eligible for the accepted test. And actually, at 47.35, is Sorilea. And in 7260, our weakest of the bunch would be Morgase, which is the minimum known strength. So let's get back to the top of the modern age Aes Sedai, or the 13-1. Pre-Wonder Girls, this was the top strength level that an Aes Sedai was known to take. And so we've got pre-stilling Swan here, we've got Moraine, we've got Romanda and Lelaine, and Elida. So you'll note that everyone here at this point in the 13-1 were leaders of some sort. We've got Swan, who was Amerlin's seat. We've got Romanda and Lelaine, who took control of the hall of Salidar. We've got Elida, who is at the top. And so came in the Wonder Girls. Egwene and Elaine are ranked at 8 plus 5, or 5 levels above what used to be the top tier of the modern age Aes Sedai. And Nynaeve was a 4 plus 9, or 9 levels above what was previously the top. And she had potential to be a 3 plus 10, or one more level above that. Mogetien was noted at 4 plus 9. So when the two of them were battling it out in Tanchiko, they were at, at par at, uh, with each other, 4 plus 9. Now off note was Cad Swain. Cad Swain was a 5 plus 8, which cements her image as legend for all modern age Aes Sedai. Because pre-Wonder Girls, she was literally 8 levels above the top of, of the Aes Sedai at that point in time. Let's just run down very quickly um, the Forsaken, or the female Forsaken at least. Lanfear and Semirage were the highest of female channels. Lanfear and Semirage were 1 plus 12, and beside them was Olivia. Right below this at 2 plus 11 was Mesana, Talaan, and Sharina Meloy, the grandmother novice. And finally, let's take a look at the men. At the very top, at plus plus 1, We've got Luce Theron slash Rand, we've got Ishamael slash Moridin, and we've got Rabin. They were all at plus plus one. At plus plus two, we can see Demandred, Aginor, Samael, and Logain and Nazrim Taim. Below this, at plus plus three, were Asmodean, Balthamel, and Narishma. And at plus plus four, we've got Belal. So one could see just how powerful Mazrim Tayyim and Loghain were amongst all of these channelers. I mean, the men couldn't compare themselves to the women, but they were pretty much at the top of, besides Rand. And Narishma was just below that. And it's interesting to see how Asmodean, um, you know, was a plus plus three or, you know, two levels below Rand. So if you think about it, he really was one of the Forsaken that you could capture for Rand. Now here's one more important thing to talk about, which was was when Swan was healed from stilling. And when she was healed, she was greatly reduced. And we can see just by how much um, she was greatly reduced. She was reduced to a 35-23, or 22 levels lower than what she was at the beginning. Liane was also reduced at, at a similar level, where she was a 14-2 before, and then she got reduced to 36-24. So another 22 level drop. Seeing this, you get to appreciate just how far Swan had fallen from um, the rankings of the Aes Sedai, where she used to be at the forefront, and then now, suddenly, she's not even at the average strength level for the Aes Sedai, which was a 28-16. Number one, she wasn't even powerful enough to create a, a gateway. She was below the average strength level of an Aes Sedai. And now she had to defer to all these people who used to defer automatically to her. 
and she had to you know navigate that and that's why people underestimated her and she was able to you know guide Egwene and because there are so many Wheel of Time fans who are just so into this we even have an Aes Sedai strength level by Aja um, that was compiled and these are all modern age um, rank levels you'll see that the mean is around 21 and the median at 18 so anyway Swan was way below this so yeah, that was my quick primer on one power strength levels within the Wheel of Time. I wonder whether they're going to be able to translate that into the show. But even if not, this continues to be my my sole guide whenever I'm reading through the books because I get so confused sometimes with why some Aes Sedai are acting that way with each other. And um, you can check out my Camelin Embassy video to see how I analyzed, you know, why that embassy failed. And I am planning to use this in my other analyses, the things I do geek about are things like this where I can, you know, bracket things in numbers and structures, especially with things as nebulous as relationships. So this is the type of um, analysis that I like. If you like seeing me talk about it and are interested in seeing more of my analyses, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. And thanks for watching. Just somebody's opinion. Somebody's opinion. Thank you.